Many people believe the next generation wipe will be decentralized. Therefore, digital identity, ID for short, will be decentralized as well. What exactly is ID and why should it be decentralized? Will the concept of login still be relevant for the decentralized wipe? And most importantly, how decentralized ID works? Now let's take a glimpse of the future. A simple question first, what is ID? In digital world, a user ID is made of everything we see, do, and experience. Your ID is more than your username and password. For example, my GitHub username is Happy Peter. Happy Peter is my ID identifier, and my password is like the secret key to prove I own my ID, but it is very different from a private key, which we will talk about soon. So Happy Peter is not my ID. It is the identifier of my ID. Your ID is a word to you in digital form. Your ID is everything that defines you in the digital world. A collection of all your personal data generated with technology. Today, the digital representation of ID is a mix of data fragmented across many apps and services. You don't own your ID. Large commercial entities like Google or Facebook own it. There are two reasons for this. Number one, till now, most user data is generated when a lot of users using the same app say Google search or Facebook. As a creator of the apps, the companies behind them own the data. Number two, the web is not a secure environment. It is impossible to store data in an immutable way before the blockchain technology is invented. So we need large corporations as a root of trust. Whatever in their databases is considered truth. To conclude this part, an ID is a word to you in digital world. And for now, it is not owned by you, but by some companies. Now it's time to ask a serious question. Why do we need decentralized ID? The answer is quite simple. Users need to control their own data. Let's first make it clear that what is a decentralized ID? What are the key differences between a decentralized ID and a current uh, centralized one? Currently, my Facebook ID is owned by Facebook. The ID identifier and all my personal data that goes with this identifier is stored in Facebook's database. However, a decentralized ID is not owned by anybody but you. It is user-generated, self-owned, with a globally unique identifier rooted in blockchain. Every user needs an ID that she truly owns. She will be in control of her own data and able to decide what she shares, who she shares with, and when to stop sharing. Amps will be designed with users at the center. In the coming decentralized digital world, Data will not be generated according to the uh, specific AMP the user is using and saved in a SQL scratch structure. Data will be saved in a more semantic synt syntax following some open standard that is shared by all users on web. All AMPs should save the data following the open standard that the user choose. This is a huge paradigm shift. Users will no longer be under the dictation of some popular apps. I'm afraid to leave Facebook if I don't like their UI. All my personal data goes with, uh, with my decentralized ID. I'm able to use another app and still have all my friends connected because the connection is at the data layer, not the app layer. That's why we need a decentralized ID. A decentralized ID system is still not widely deployed. 
it's hard to say what's the final solution, but we can clearly see a lot of consensus has gathered around the W3C DID, and people are collaborating on platforms like DIF with members like Microsoft, IBM, WebBank, and also blockchain projects like Ethereum, Byte, Blockstack, etc. Users first need to generate their ID identifier, a username in the decentralized world. Currently, cell phone number or email addresses or social network usernames are widely used to log in our daily apps. They are nice identifiers in that they are really human friendly. But problem is that they are centralized and given by other providers and can be removed by them. If you use a decentralized system like Blockstack, your ID identifier will be generated on blockchain with W3C DID data syntax. However, decentralized ID identifiers is not human friendly. I can no longer use something like Happy Peter. DID identifiers usually look like this much longer. Due to the Zuku's triangle, DID is hard to make human meaningful. Finding an easy to remember username to the DID in a really secure and decentralized way is harder than it looks. The decentralized world has no server at all. User is responsible to save their own data. Blockchain projects like Ethereum is like a mainstream, trying to save all the user data on chain. But considering how much data a user using her social app can generate, many people are now prefer a layered solution. That is, only saving the most important root of trust data on chain, while users' actual identity data resides encrypted off chain. Users will store data at their own devices or their own controlled cloud space. Preferably, it will be a blockchain backed decentralized storage method, say IPFS or Blockstack's Gaia system. Because these are not controlled by any commercial entity and is immune to censorship. Or you can still use Google or Microsoft's cloud services as long as you do enough backups or your data is encrypted, so nobody knows what's inside. Each DID has its own public key also saved on blockchain, and the user uses the private key to do authentication and authorization. Even if you are not a cryptography expert and have no idea about how digital signatures work, it's not hard to understand how people can sign with their private key to prove that they are associated with a DID and they have the right to do something. But authenticating by signing is not like a traditional logging in. Bitcoin developer Peter told one site, if you are logging in, it is centralized. Traditionally, my username and password are stored in the app's database. The logging in is actually asking the app if I can come in. But now I'm the decentralized way. I do not need to stay logging in at all. Whenever I need to prove my right to do something, I sign with my private key. Also, I sign to authorize people how they can access my data. Say, I can allow all my friends to view my posts and my collaborators to edit the documentation I shared with them. Everything can be done in a fine-grained way. That is how decentralized ID works. Lastly, I hope I have made two points clear. Number one, decentralized ID is needed if people want to control their virtual self. With our life becoming more digitalized day by day, it's hard to imagine people still want a small group of strangers control their ID. Number two, it will take some time and a big paradigm shift. 
but the current Web 2.0 functionalities can be done in a decentralized manner.